Hello, I'm Justine Willis-Toms. Today I'm hosting Gene Bauer. He's a co-author of Living the Farm Sanctuary Life, The Ultimate Guide to Eating Mindfully, Living Longer, and Feeling Better Every Day. And he is the president and co-founder of Farm Sanctuary. Gene, welcome to the New Dimensions Cafe. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. What is the Farm Sanctuary? Farm Sanctuary is a nonprofit organization that works to combat factory farming and to raise awareness about our food system and to encourage people to live well and not to support this abusive factory farming industry. So they're actual farms? Yeah, Farm Sanctuary operates sanctuaries for rescued animals who we have literally found in trash cans or thrown on piles of dead animals. So we currently operate three sanctuaries, one in New York and two in California. And can people come visit these farms? Yes, we encourage people to come visit the sanctuary, get to know the animals, give a pig a belly rub, uh, get to know them as friends. You know, at Farm Sanctuary, the animals are our friends, not our food. I know that you've told many stories about people who have come who eat a meat diet, and, and they come and they interact with these animals. And they go away. (laughs) Yeah, with a whole new understanding. You know, these are animals that are not that different than cats and dogs. We have turkeys, for example, that will follow you around the farm. They love human companionship. And we have sheep, for example, who like to be petted. And so when you stop petting them, they will start pawing at you like a dog would paw at you saying, keep petting me. So they're individuals. They have feelings. They have relationships. They have emotions. And they want to be treated with kindness like all other animals. And when people visit Farm Sanctuary, they get to know these animals as living, feeling individuals, very similar to their cats and dogs. So it's very different than going to a zoo. It is. The attitude is different. You know, at a zoo, the animals are really seen as commodities to be, you know, and they're, and people pay to go look at them. And people do appreciate animals, but the relationship is different. The animals are there as tools, in a sense, to sell tickets at a zoo for the most part. Whereas at Farm Sanctuary, it's the animal's sanctuary. And first and foremost is their well-being. And we have a sign when people enter the sanctuary that says, you are now entering the animal's sanctuary. Please remember that you're a guest in their home. You know, whereas at a zoo, these animals are on display for human entertainment, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the sanctuary, it's a sanctuary for animals. And ultimately, it's also a sanctuary for people where we treat other animals with respect and, you know, pay attention to them and to who they are and try to understand them. And this actually enriches our lives as well. And entering that, we realize we're just another animal too. We we are absolutely part of nature. And, you know, the more connected we are with other animals and the more respectful we are of other animals, I think the better ultimately we will be on this planet, the healthier we will be, the happier we will be. I I remember a time, this is um, at a local county fair and they had a little petting pen where they had some animals there and my grandchildren went in and I noticed that the older little boy he was kind of chasing the animals around and I didn't see Megan I thought where did she go and I got panicked for a moment and I turned around and looked at her and she was sitting down in the hay and she had a duck on her lap a chicken next to her and a rabbit on the other side. She was just sitting there, and they were just like this. She looked like St. Francis of Assisi wow, or something. What a beautiful scene. Yeah, I mean, there's a natural connection children often have with other animals, and you know, treating them kindly and naturally appreciating them and being, in, in some cases, in awe of other animals. If you think about human history, we probably evolved in a way where we looked at how strong these animals were, how fast or how they could fly, and we were in awe. And humans over the course of history have deified animals even. And our relationship with them has changed over time. And we have become essentially, in many cases, like tyrants and abusing them. And as we do that, it does something to our psychology. And, And that's not healthy for anybody. I know that you are vegan, so you're plant-based eating and whole foods. And um, so there are several advantages 
to this, both personally, your health-wise, you talk about that, and also for the planet. I'd like for you to kind of describe those two different aspects of being vegan. Yeah, well, if you look at our bodies, we are best suited to eat plant foods. And when we eat animal foods, we have problems like heart disease and, and various types of cancer. So eating plants serves us very well. We can get all the nutrients we need, not only to survive, but to thrive. I've done several marathons. I've done an Ironman triathlon, all this on plant foods. There's elite athletes performing at a very high level on all plant foods. In fact, Carl Lewis, the Olympic gold medalist, did his best times on a vegan diet. So you can get everything you need eating and plants. And he's a, he's a runner, a long, a long he, distance. He, he was a, a runner, a, a, a track star. He mm -hmm. did, I think, sprints. He did the long jump. Um, and he was in the Olympics and won several gold medals for several of these different events. And so you can get everything you need on plants for, for health to, to survive and to thrive. And then in terms of the environment, raising animals for food requires enormous amounts of resources. 70% of the corn and 90% of the soy produced in the U.S. is used to feed farm animals so they can be slaughtered. If we ate that corn and soy and these other feed crops uh, and use that land to grow food for humans, uh, we could feed so many more people, it'd be much more efficient, would require far fewer resources, including water, and, and it would cause much less pollution because not only are we wasting these scarce resources on the front end, we then have vast quantities of waste and manure. Sometimes it's laden with pathogens, and sometimes those pathogens are antibiotic resistant because most of the drugs and antibiotics used in the U.S. are fed to farm animals. So then we have this horrible waste problem on the back end, and uh, eating plants instead of animals would help to eliminate those problems. So when you talk about antibiotics, we, we talk about how we're, we're getting resistant to them in our bodies, but maybe it's also through the foods and the meats we're eating. Absolutely. I think that animal agriculture is one of the primary reasons we're seeing so much resistance to antibiotics. And, and so formerly life-saving drugs are now being rendered useless. And you know, what basically happens is that you have pathogens and bacteria, and if there is a certain uh, drug that kills them, it kills the ones that it kills, but the ones that it doesn't kill survive and reproduce. And so that's how the resistance essentially occurs. And the majority of these antibiotics being used in the U.S. are used to feed farm animals. So the pathogens that are becoming resistant oftentimes come from these farms. And so, yes, uh, that's a huge reason we're seeing the kind of problems we are today. Say more details about our own health. I mean, you're talking about you're a triathlete and you you look very fit and very bright and bushy-tailed, as <laughs> someone would say. So you you find that there's you're active. It's not hurting your activity. People might say, no, well, I, I need my protein. Mm -hmm. Well, I get all the protein I need from plant sources. And, you know, we grow up with certain habits and beliefs, and sometimes those beliefs are myths. You know, this idea that we need meat for protein is a myth. We can get all the protein we need on plant foods. And, you know, if you look at our bodies, we are, if we were natural carnivores, we would have teeth for tearing into flesh and claws for tearing into flesh, which we don't. Um, also, we have a very long intestinal tract. And meat eaters have a short intestinal tract because meat is a putrefying flesh and it has to get through the system quickly. But in the case of humans, we have this putrefying flesh that can take days to get through our system and create problems, things like colon cancer, for instance. So eating animal foods is bad for animals. It's bad for us. And we could do much better by eating a whole foods, plant-based diet. We could save something like 70% on healthcare costs in this country by shifting to a whole foods, plant-based diet. And then to speak of the environment, like in the West of the United States, we're really in dire trouble with water. And we're in severe, especially California, severe, severe drought. Yes. Hopefully this will get people thinking about it and maybe shifting away from eating a certain way. And, you know, frankly, government policies should not be enabling and supporting this wasteful animal-based farming system. Um, you know, about half of the water used in the 
in California is used for animal agriculture to grow alfalfa, for example, which is a feed crop. Now, if that water was used to grow plant foods for human consumption, we could get a lot more food. It would be a lot more efficient. It makes a lot more sense ultimately. I mean, our food system has become very short-sighted, very wasteful. The soil has become devoid of organic nutrients. And, um, you know, we need to invest in the soil instead of just, you know, letting the soil become despoiled and then putting in petrochemical fertilizers to grow the food very quickly without the nutrients, essentially. You know, I, I kind of sometimes look at uh, organic food versus non-organic food and compare it to like vinyl records versus CDs. With the vinyl record, you have a depth and a richness uh, like you would have with organic soil with all these sort of subtle parts. Whereas with the CD, it's very thin and there's just not a lot of depth. And, and that's the case with food that's grown on despoiled, weak soil. And soil is one of our most precious things on the whole planet. Absolutely. Soil is an ecosystem and you need to invest in it. Just like anything that's important, you need to invest in it and, and allow it to evolve and grow and develop. And you know, that's not what we do when it comes to farming in this country today. Tell me, how easy is it to cook in a vegan way or become a vegetarian? Oh, it's uh, getting easier and easier. There's farmer's markets popping up all over the place. There's community-supported agriculture programs where people invest in a farming operation that delivers fresh produce on a regular basis. Um, there's also a lot of alternatives to animal products, like instead of cow's milk, now in mainstream grocery stores, you can get almond milk or coconut milk or soy milk. Um, there's alternatives to mayonnaise, alternatives to meats. Instead of a, a hamburger, you can get a veggie burger. Instead of meatballs, you can get veggie meatballs. And then also you can just start using more vegetables or more beans or more whole grains. And of course, there's tofu, there's tempeh. Uh, it's getting easier than ever. That's so great. So do check it out. And I want to thank you so much, Jean, for being with us today on the New Dimensions Cafe. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed having you. I've been speaking with Jean Bauer, the president and co-founder of Farm Sanctuary and the co-author of Living the Farm Sanctuary Life, the ultimate guide to eating mindfully, living longer, and feeling better every day. And if you'd like to know more about his work, you can go to the website farmsanctuary.org. Or you can get there through the New Dimensions website, newdimensions.org. I'm Justine Willis-Toms. I want to thank you for joining us on the New Dimensions Cafe and invite you, please do join us again. You've been listening to the New Dimensions Cafe. This series of shorter interviews features many of the remarkable guests also featured on our internationally syndicated one-hour New Dimensions radio series. To access more than a thousand hours of programs, to subscribe to our newsletters, or to become a member, please visit us at newdimensions.org.